Hey guys, what's up? All right, all right, all right. It's Double Deuce back. We're going to open the vault tonight. Nobody other than my kids have seen this suitcase. So, anyways, I got a book here. It's called Chevrolet by the Numbers. Now, this is the 65 through 69 version. It was written by Alan L. Colvin, okay? I don't know if these are out of print or not. I bought many of these books. And I've loaned them out and never got them back. They're about 30 bucks a piece. They show you everything you would ever want to know about a particular model year from 65 to 69. Every blueprint, every casting number, every part number is amazing. Let's look at this one here. Oh, what do we got here? We got the 3941130. This to me looks like the Z28 manifold. Cross ram. Those are blueprints from GM back in the day. Very, very, very rare. Actually, you'll see the picture over here. They show you photos of what it is. They have camshaft specs. They have everything you would ever want to know. They got tri power intakes. They even got the boring bread and butter two barrel manifolds that came on the big blocks and uh, pickup trucks and uh, 69 Impalas. Now you're going to see I got a lot of pieces of paper in here, okay, with footnotes because um, I used to make crib sheets. So when I used to go to the swap meets, I always had that little black book in my pocket. So anyways, guys, like, share, subscribe if you want. Um, grab your favorite smoke, beverage, popcorn, whatever you want to do. And be sure you come back because we're going to open the vault. And I got one question that... I don't think anybody has ever thought about in the vault, okay? Um, this goes to, like, I just realized it today, to be honest with you. So, anyways, guys, get ready, do your thing, and hang out with Danny today. Okay, I'm not going to waste nobody's time here. Um, I just went over the, the book. They do sell different years. This is 65 to 69. They have the 70 through 75, which has the LS6 Chevelle, all the casting numbers, all the specs from General Motors. This all came from blueprints a long time ago, and um, I don't even know when this book was put in print, to be honest with you. Um, but, like I say, I bought many of these, and I loaded them to my friends, and for some reason, they are the holy grail of the Chevrolet supercars, and uh, it is what it is. So, we're going to get into this here. Now, I, I said that everything in my life that is about anything important with muscle cars is in this briefcase. So, I know it may sound stupid or cliche to everybody else, but we're going to get to something that I just realized today is going to drive everybody crazy. Okay, I have a complete list here of all the 9560 all aluminum Chevrolet Camaros. They made two Corvettes, but if you look at this list, this has every option, every dealer <laughs> that was sold to, okay? Now you look there, and when you look down that list, you're gonna see 30 went to Fred Gibb Chevrolet. He started this motion. And you roll down through the list here, because I live in Rhode Island, and I got down to, oh, where's it at here? I'm reading backwards. Scantio Chevrolet. Right there. They sold one all-aluminum 427 Camaro. One. Okay, and I, I searched for this car forever. Now, there's only 50... On the list and then I found the other remaining few and and actually were on the back of the list here but not one of these dealers okay we got Gibb Chevrolet uh, Marola Chevrolet Penske Chevrolet Jackhead Chevrolet Arm and R Smith he's the big 409 guy remember those that's why I got that 409 engine in my living room um, McEvil Chevrolet, Jim Rathman, Indian River, 
you know, and the list goes on and on. We got Burger Chevrolet. We actually have Holly Chevrolet in Brownwood, Texas. You know, as you get down through all these lists here, you're going to see 30 went to Gibb, 5 went to Morales, 3 went to Penske, 2 went to Jack Head, 2 went to Armand Smith, and after Huffman Chevrolet, there's always one. Okay, because these were ex super expensive, and I'll tell you the story why these are crazy money. Okay, now I had, I guess, the blessing to talk to um, one of the guys that owned number one and number two ZL1. Um, now, he was an engineer for uh, Chevrolet at the time, and I was. I was doing research on my convertible because, you know, the dealer told me that it was owned internally by Chevrolet. The dealer told me it was a ZL1 convertible, which they never made. You know, I mean, I mean, you know, they just sold cars. You know, um, come to find out, mine was a L89 convertible, so it had all aluminum heads and aluminum intake, but it had a cast iron block. So, um, as I was going through all this information, trying to find this stuff out, I was like, you know, it just, I mean, it was like, seriously, back in, I think, 1987, I had a thousand dollar phone bill back then, trying to talk to people to create history, you know, and uh, anyways, one day, um, somebody turned me on to this list. And, um, and I went through the list, and I realized something. There's not one. There's not one Yenko Chevrolet ZL1 sold to them. Not one. Because the 9560s were all aluminum, okay? And I think it was the 9561s were... Um, the cast iron converted 427 and which Yenko started that basically he would pull out the he would order in a 375 horse 296 yank the engine out throw in a, a 427 you know it's basically an L88 short block and um, they would use all the remaining pieces off the top because they're all the same you know and uh, like even the camshaft was the same you know what I mean so they had all these leftover 375 horse engines that they couldn't get rid of. And uh, it kind of made me laugh when I was putting my car together and, you know, my engine has, it was blown up, you know what I mean? And I had to rebuild that thing and I was like, where are all these, like, you know, engines now, you know? Yenko sold that um, 9561 with the cast iron 427 with a full GM warranty because the engines were warrantied. <laughs> and a brand new car, a brand new engine, and the warranty, you know, it applied to that vehicle back in the day. So, through all the times when you were trying to buy a muscle car back then, we had Ford, Chrysler, and GM, all right? Uh, GM always made sure that the working man could afford his cars, you know, except for the 9560 all aluminum Camaro. That was a shock to the world. Um, you know, back in the day, um, that the cost of uh, 9560 all aluminum car, um, Fred Gibb found out that he ordered a bunch of them and they had a, almost an $8,000 price tag on them back in 1969, which was. It was a little over, you know, three quarters of what a 375 horse 386 would cost. So, long story short, um, they wouldn't take them back. Okay, so it was it was kind of a stalemate. You know, he signed on to it. He's responsible for them. So I don't know how it actually got started, but there was a they come up with a company called Span Incorporated, S P A N. Uh, where you could buy your Yenkos. I think Yenko was involved in that. You could buy your Yenko Camaros through Span Incorporated. Any dealer who wanted one could get one through Span Incorporated. 
Um, and I'm kind of wondering if a lot of these all aluminum ZL1s, now they made 69 ZL1 Camaros in 1969, which is kind of ironic, and they made two Corvettes. Now the two Corvettes will probably go down in history as probably one of the most rarest, expensive Corvettes ever. Um, you know, all because of the, you know, just the interest in those cars. But anyways, like I say, it was just kind of funny that little old Rhode Island up here had one Scuncio Camaro, and it was green. And we'll look down through that list here, because I think it was number 60 was that car. So they're all listed by numbers and VIN numbers on these things and options colors everything right so we get down to number 60 it is Scuncio Chevrolet this is a car that I actually seen that nobody thought they, th they thought the guy was full of crap and because uh, he worked an electric boat down here building submarines and um, so number 60 Scuncio Chevrolet Greenville Rhode Island okay this was ordered as follows it had an M22 four speed it had the air spoiler, the, the D80 front and rear spoilers. Um, had an AM push button radio, which was pretty much common on those cars, except mine. And it was Fathom Green, code 5757. So every car that was ever built that was a ZL1, they kept every single option and dealer and VIN number. So, like I say, guys, you know, I've, this is the vault. And I'm going to open the vault up again, and there's going to be all kinds of crazy stuff in there, like stickers from back in the 70s. Like, I actually bought um, an extra sticker for my Camaro because it had electronic ignition. And I will break that out for you now. What Camaro came with transistorized ignition? This was on the console of my car. It was a sticker stuck on my console. It was just a paper sticker, and it was barely legible. And then when I seen I could get a new one, I bought one for my car, even though I don't run the old transistor as ignition no more. What Camaro came with this? That's what I want to know. I mean, the buzz box was still out front on the... Um, radiator support down below to keep it away from the heat and uh, you know just many things that over time I've collected so these are stickers that are probably 30 years old or better 40 years old actually you know and uh, I keep them in my little briefcase here and I do have this I found two of these in my car when I bought this one was a business plate okay from Pennsylvania in 1969 and the other one was a dealer plate um, 1969 now my car was sold to a um, a business it was not sold to an individual my car was sold to Arrow Forge and Meadwell and I kind of wonder if, if anybody could find these you know a link to these plates here if that was registered to Arrow Forge you know, I don't know. You know, but over time, like this is the the briefcase. I got a lot of my kids' history in here. One thing that you might find funny that I found was I'll figure it out here. Okay, here it is, right here. This is a. I'm gonna cover the name up here. This is a 19 shares of General Motors Corporation from 1976. 19 shares. Being that General Motors is not around no more, just kind of wonder, you know, where do you find that stuff, you know? Yeah, I go down through here and I find like paperwork on. Oh, from the. I think this is a. Camaro Research Group, Rich Fields. 
Uh, I tried to document my car back in the day with Rich Fields to the Camaro Research Group, and they only collected information. Um, I gave them all my codes, everything off this thing, and it like, kind of went nowhere. It was kind of like it was kind of like a the sell your information thing going on there. Now there's somebody on the Enco.net page trying to redo that again, and uh, I contacted them, and I said, hey, you know what, like, uh, I have one, you know, like something rare, and they wanted all the solid lifter cars that were, um, you know, that were built, that are still out there, because all of them have been bought and sold, but I still have my son's 67 Z28 out in my trailer. They made 602 of those cars, you know. Um, I still got my L89 convertible, you know. Because I didn't see the profit in, you know, you can't buy fun. You can't, you can't buy that feeling. I mean, I don't care how much money these people have, they can't buy that feeling. But, you know what I mean? So, all those cars still remain to this day. Now, I'm going to show you something really weird here. Um, I was involved with a guy who owned a body shop and we decided to create this. Yes, it's an XJ12 V12 Jag, but it's a station wagon. You know, because back then it was a soccer mom time, man. You know, it was all about the soccer moms and they were up and coming and, you know, the... Uh, I had a 76 XJ sedan, uh, like this right here, with a B12 in it. And uh, anyways, we were very intrigued on making a station wagon version of this car. Now, that car never came to reality. Um, we had everything to do it. Um, we actually bought an MG to use the roof panel from because the MG wagon had the same lines except the back window was different um, so what we ended up doing was taking a four door Rolls Royce Silver Shadow I cut it in half shortened it by 10 inches and made it into a Cornish convertible and through all this we had the opportunity to buy the Cornish convertible they blew up in Caddyshack. Um, I think the guy's name was Tony Handler out in California. Um, he had all the Rolls Royce parts and everything and uh, very complicated car to work on. But I thought it would be easier just to take everything off the Silver Shadow and just build the Cornish convertible that was already burned and blown up. <clears throat> but in the long run, I made the Silver Shadow into a two-door Cornish convertible. And it still sits in a garage about five miles away from me. Um, we had done extensive amounts of work that I, I dropped the dash two inches. I dropped the windshield into the cowl to give it more of a old, like, you know, airplane bomber look, you know. Um, for the curves on the quarter panels, we, we use two Volkswagen fenders from the front and cut pieces out of them to give them those swipes, you know what I mean, that made that body flow with the body line all the way up. And um, all the windows in the car, except for the windshield, were Mercedes. You know, they were the secure at Mercedes glass, you know. And uh, <laughs> I think I worked in that car... about 24 months, maybe longer, straight, every day, trying to, he put me in a, one side of the shop where I had two lifts, my toolbox, and nobody to bother me, and I just started making things, you know, and I learned how to aluminum weld back then, because the doors on all the Rolls Royces were aluminum, but the doors on the Mercedes were all steel, so I had to figure out how to attach the inner structure of the window regulators with the door of the Mercedes to the outer skins of the aluminum Rolls Royce. So, you know, and to this day, those things are still holding up great. So, 
But anyways, no, this is just some of the stuff in my little box here, you know, my suitcase. Um, I got 348-409 information. Um, I actually got detailed blueprints of a go-kart I was going to build back in like 1981, you know. I still have that in here. And then in here, there are so many old magazines and um, just things that, you know, I kept for information to save over the years. And uh, and you'll notice one of them here is a silver ZL1 Camaro. Because at the time, this magazine was very, very early then. This was lucky number 13 um, Camaro. And this was actually 1994 this come out. And I got magazines back to 1967, you know that I always kept for information, for reference, to see, you know, a lot of things get lost in translation over time, like this list that I kept forever, um, because it's here, and, uh, you know, now there's probably a lot of indifferences about this list now, since the Bear Jackson auction came out, you know, but, like I say, you know, when it comes down to, you know, brass tacks, I got all the paint chips of all the cars back in the day, and I have my original sales brochure for my 69 Camaro that was in the back seat when I got it back in 1980 or whatever it was. And actually I got a, a Monte Carlo one too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I saved a lot of weird stuff. And I think I do have a 1974 Z28 GM decal in here somewhere, along with all the paint codes, references, options, and whatnot. But, anyways, guys, like I say, all this stuff that I do for my RC car hobby comes from this suitcase. Um, you know, it was a great time that I lived, and I would like to share it with everybody else. So, you know, if you think that's cool, put your comments down below. If not, hey, you know, put your comments down below. I don't care. You know, I mean, you're, you're, you're free to express your own opinion. So, anyways, guys, like, share, subscribe if you want. Tell your friends. Um, I'll be back with, like I say, more cool content here. Um, love to all. Adios.